We authenticate to network resources all the time. We may be logging into a web server. We may be authenticating into a domain. If you're a network administrator, you may be logging into switches and routers and firewalls, maybe a large number of different devices. Not all of those different systems use the same process to authenticate. If you're logging into a Windows domain, it may be using Kerberos. If you're logging into a dial-up connection or logging into a router or switch, there may be different methods that are used to authenticate you on to the network. You may hear this referred to as AAA. That stands for Authentication, Authorization, and Accounting. It's those three functions that make sure that you have access to the network, that you are who you say you are, that you then get the proper access to those resources, and it logs and makes sure that we have a record of whenever anybody authenticated onto those resources. The idea, of course, is that we can centralize everything this way. If you're logging into a switch or logging into a router or logging into firewalls or logging into a dial-in service, those may all be very different components, perhaps even components that are made by different manufacturers. But by using one standard way of authenticating, we can just use a single username and password and log into all of those different resources. One common way to do this is to use a protocol called RADIUS. RADIUS stands for Remote Authentication Dial-In User Service. That term dial-in is right there in the name. So already it sounds like a very old protocol, and it is. It goes back to RFC 2058. The current RFC for RADIUS is RFC 2865. This uses UDP, and it uses port 1812 by default. And it can be used for many different resources. You may be dialing in from a remote access into a remote access server. And that remote access server is receiving your username and password. And it's using the RADIUS protocol to communicate to a AAA server. This is one that is expecting that RADIUS protocol to check against a centralized database to see if your username and password match. And if they do, it will send a message back to your remote access server to grant you access. If you're using something like WPA2 Enterprise or 802.1x, you may be authenticating onto wireless access points from other devices. Those wireless access points can also use the RADIUS protocol. It's a very standardized protocol, again, to talk back to the AAA server and make sure that your username and password is correct. And because it's the same AAA server, you can use the same username and password on your dial-in as your using for your wireless clients. There's another way to provide this type of AAA. It's with a protocol called TACAX. That stands for Terminal Access Controller Access Control System. It's another one that sounds very old. And it is. It goes back to RFC 1492. This was used to authenticate people to dial up lines people were using to access ARPANET prior to the internet. There is the ARPANET. So that's already a very old protocol. It's been updated through the years, though. One update was called Extended TACAX. This was one that was created by Cisco. It's proprietary to Cisco. And it provides some additional accounting and provides some additional auditing functionality. The type of TACAX you usually see deployed is one called TACAX Plus. This is also Cisco proprietary. So generally, it's a Cisco server that's providing that TACAX functionality. It's not backwards compatible with the other TACAX versions. It is a brand new version of TACAX. And it has a lot of different authentication methods and special response codes associated with that. In your environment, you're probably using one of those. You're probably using TACAX or RADIUS to provide that centralized authentication, authorization, and auditing service.